Hello, and today we have Dr. David Lebarski with us today at TEDx Folsom Studio. Welcome. Thank you. Very excited you applied to speak for TEDx Folsom. But just so the TEDx Folsom community can understand, maybe give a little bit about your background and maybe what inspired you to apply to, to speak at TEDx Folsom. Right. Well, first of all, I'm excited too. And uh, because uh, I'm a big fan of TEDx, listened to a ton of the lectures, and uh, really thrilled to be part of the program. Um, my background is one of academia. I've been a practicing uh, academic anesthesiologist for almost 35 years before I moved to Sacramento and uh, hung that up and, and became a primarily an administrator. Um, but all along the way, um, I've sort of been or tried to be near the cutting edge of the application of uh, digital uh, knowledge um, and how one could use it to enhance patient care. And I've been doing that. Uh, first papers I published uh, back in the early 90s, uh, early adopter of electronic medical records and uh, how those actually could help people deliver better care. And uh, my uh, journey, especially around the digital transformation of our entire healthcare system writ large, really stems from a lot of that early work. Yeah, I mean, the interoperability for an EMR across platforms is still something that has to get figured out globally and nationally as well, but that's awesome. I didn't know that about you. That's really interesting. Yeah, um, and you're absolutely right. Interoperability is the key, right? You may or may not remember because you're not old enough, but uh, you know, I used to use Lotus Notes and Microsoft Word and all these different programs that didn't talk to each other. You couldn't copy and paste from one program into another. You couldn't have seamless presentations. You couldn't have multimedia presentations. All of a sudden, once there was a complete family suite of products that really met the needs of everybody uh, who's using a computer, productivity just shot through the roof for American businesses and for academics as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to the same thing in the healthcare space. It's coming. It seems people have been saying this a long time, but it is coming. Well, I love it. I mean, we're, we're talking about reimagination, right? We're talking about innovation here. Um, Without giving away too much, obviously, um, maybe give a quick little maybe summary or a little nugget of information about from your for your talk. Right. Well, so UC Davis. Uh, again, I work with an amazing team of individuals, um, and really have put themselves forward as a leader in how to apply the collection of digital data to furthering healthcare for individuals and for whole communities. Um, and one of the things we're going to talk about is the fact that. We really haven't managed to do what everybody else has done in every other industry, which is around having the individual involved in figuring out what they want, communicating what they want, getting what they want, without ever interacting with another human being. And whether it's making flights on American Airlines or uh, buying a comb on Amazon, you really know what you're getting just because you have the right digital support system. That doesn't yet exist in healthcare, but we're really working towards that goal. And we're going to be talking a little bit about why we were chosen as one of 15 uh, academic health systems to work with one of the largest uh, VC firms uh, in the healthcare space as a partner to co develop and collaborate in making this a reality, which is, you know, you pick up your iPhone, everything works together, right? I mean, you, your credit card will populate almost anything that you want to buy across 100 different apps doesn't occur in healthcare space. But there's no reason it shouldn't. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what the roadmap is to getting there and what people can expect from that digital transformation in the next few years. Now it's quite interesting because as you said, like a lot of industries have gone through that digital transformation from the consumer level at least, right? Um, and you're saying healthcare is not there yet. Getting there, but getting not there, there yet. Um, so one thing I wanted to ask you was, with this talk, what is one thing you want people to walk away with? I want them to understand their part in the digital transformation, how they can make it better and what they should expect from their healthcare providers, their doctors, their hospitals, and their clinics, and how they're gonna be central to that transformation actually occurring. Because as we're gonna talk or in, during the, the discussion, um, we're gonna see that the individual and the data that they have and their ability to provide self-triage and self-care is gonna actually streamline the interactions when they actually have to go see someone. So it's a, a lot of it is, as I said, you can call up American Airlines. Sorry, I fly a lot of American Airlines. I have 4 million miles. So I have a lot of experience with them. And I used to talk to people all the time. I can't remember the last time I actually had to talk to an agent, but I know that they're there if I need them to be. 
And I think that it's not, a, it's not an advertisement for American, <laughs> um, but it is an advertisement for your doctor and your nurse. They still need to be there to answer your questions that you can't figure out on your own but they don't need to be involved in every amount of data gathering or even care delivery, because a lot of it is just algorithms that can be applied by a computer and tell you what do you need to do right now to take care of yourself. Well, that, that's definitely a topic of reimagination on the healthcare space. We're very excited to, again, listen to your talk and understand it deeper on January 21st. Again, this is Dr. David Lubarski. Uh, he'll be joining us January 21st at the Harris Center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.